Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation for a complex number with absolute value. We have z times the absolute value of z equals 1 minus square root of 3 times i and we're going to be solving for z. z is a complex number, I guess needless to say, because this channel is all about complex numbers. All right, I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm just going to do the usual, and just assume that since Z is a complex number, it can be written in standard form as A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers. This distinction is important. We need to make sure A and B are reals. Now, we're going to obviously find the absolute value from here, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now we're going to go ahead and plug these into our equation, set it equal to 1 minus square root of 3 times i, and then solve for a and b. One equation, two unknowns. Let's go. We're going to multiply z by absolute value of z, so a plus bi, multiply by the square root of a squared plus b squared, and that equals 1 minus root 3i. Great. Now, we have two variables, like I said earlier. How do we solve for them using a single equation? Well, it is the equality of two complex numbers. If two complex numbers are equal, then their real parts are equal and imaginary parts are equal. Remember that? We talked about that property a while ago, and I think in one of the lecture videos as well, I can't remember. So if a plus b is equal to c plus di, this implies two things, a is equal to c and b is equal to d. Otherwise, they're not going to be equal, okay? So, and just a quick reminder, i is the number whose square equals negative 1. But we don't need that information for this problem. So, what do we do? Distribute and separate the real parts and imaginary parts because we're going to set up an equality. Not an inequality, an in. Okay, not in, an equality. Okay, we need to separate the real parts and the imaginary parts because we're going to set an equality. Okay, distribute the A and distribute the B and multiply by I. Some people put the I before it, doesn't matter, no big deal, and this is equal to 1 minus root 3I. Now, Look at the left-hand side. This is the real part. It's equal to 1. This is the imaginary part. It's equal to negative root 3. So we got two equations. Let's go ahead and write them. That's going to give us a system. And then we'll talk about solution methods. One of them is a times the square root of a squared plus b squared equals 1. And the other one is similar. How do you solve this system? Well, I can think of two methods. First one is called divide and sub and the second method can be summarized as square and add all right let's do it let's start with the first one divide and sub so i'm going to divide the second equation by the first because i want to get a radical not the reciprocal of a radical so b times the square root of a squared plus b squared divided by a times the square root of that equals negative root 3. Awesome. Now, these numbers or expressions cancel out, leaving us with something, something nice. b equals negative root 3a. Remember, it's divide and sub. So we're going to go ahead and sub this into one of the equations. Doesn't matter which one, but I like the first one a little better. Second one is okay too. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in here. b equals so we have this equation, let me rewrite it. And now we're going to replace b with that, negative root 3a. So a times, and if you square it, if you square b, from here you get 3a squared, right? When you square this number, it becomes positive. Remember that? So we're going to get a squared plus 3a squared equals 1. a squared plus 3a squared is equal to 4a squared. Now here we have to be very careful because the square root of 4a squared can be two things, 2a or negative 2a. Right? Well, here's the problem. If a is positive, we get a times 2a equals 1. Otherwise, we get a times negative 2a equals 1. 
first one gives us 2a squared equals 1. The second one gives us negative 2a squared equals 1. Take a look at these. Take a good look. Can a squared be negative 1 half? Well, if a is real, no way. And we said that a and b must be real. So this is not possible. So we have to go with the first one, a squared equals 1 half. But guess what? This gives us two values for a. Let's go ahead and take a look. a equals 1 over root 2, or a equals negative 1 over root 2. And of course, depending on these values of a, we're going to get different values for b, because b and a are related, right? With this equation, negative root 3a. Let's go ahead and copy that here. Cheat, cheat. So this is our relationship. And now, b is going to be negative root 3 times a. So if a is 1 over root 2, b is going to be negative root 3. Negative, negative root 3 over root 2, and otherwise it's going to be root 3 over root 2. Notice that a and b have different signs. That kind of makes sense. It should, because if you look at the original problem, that should give you a good clue. Here, they have different signs, so it should be normal. Now, that is the critical part. Which one are we going to take, or do we have two solutions? Good question, right? So let me go ahead and leave it at this because we're going to talk about the second method and we'll come back to this hopefully if i remember all right second method so rewrite the equation okay great so this is what i was thinking so by the way i just came up with this problem and i, I thought about possible solutions like how could i solve this differently right I, that's something that i always think about is there a second or third method and i realized since the absolute value of z is a scalar, where is my physics people? Raise your hand. Uh, so this is a scalar, and the other one is kind of like a vector, and the result is a vector, of course. So I'm thinking this left-hand side, or z, z actually, must be a multiple of 1 minus root 3i, right? Because this is a scalar. So what does that mean, though? Does it mean an integer multiple? No, no, it's just going to be a k multiple. So I'm going to write z as k times 1 minus root 3i. Let me tell you why this works. If you replace z with that, you're going to get 1 minus root 3i times k, and its absolute value is going to be some other number, which is obviously, in this case, 1 over k, and then they're going to cancel out and giving us our number. Cool. So let's go ahead and see how this plays out. If z is equal to this, and of course k is a real number, right? We have two scenarios because the absolute value of z from here, we, we kind of have to think about it, right? How do you find the absolute value of z from this? Well, you just take the absolute value of k and the absolute value of the complex number, right? Because you can take the constant out. But the absolute value of k actually depends on the value of k, so let's just go ahead and write it this way first. So if k is positive, absolute value of z is equal to 2k if k is positive. And it's equal to negative 2k if k is negative. So let's go ahead and look at both scenarios. Suppose, you know how math proofs start, suppose k is positive. In this case, we have z times the absolute value of z equals. So if k is positive, we're going to have, we're going to use this one for absolute value of z. And for z, we're going to use this one. Make sense? I didn't complicate things. This looks complicated to me. <laughs> Anyways, so we're going to go ahead and replace z with k times 1 minus root 3i. Remember, that was the formula. And absolute value of z is going to be just 2k. And this is supposed to equal 1 minus root 3i. You see, this is what I meant by canceling out. So now they're going to go ahead and cancel out like this, these two, because they're not zero. And we're going to have a 1, 2k squared equals 1, k squared is equal to 1 half. So we kind of got to the same point in a different way. So from here, there are two k values. k is either 1 over root 2 or negative 1 over root. Wait a minute. Didn't you say k if k is positive? Yes. So we have to discard the bad one, the negative one. So we're going to take this. All good, right? Now, suppose k is less than 0. What happens if k is negative, right? Well, in this case, we have to use the same thing for z. Of course, z is not going to change. But the absolute value, remember, is going to be 2k. So then we're going to set it equal to z, which is, I mean, z times absolute value of z, which is this. These two are still going to cancel out. But we're going to end up with a different equation. Negative 2k squared equals 1. Does that look familiar? k squared is equal to negative 1 half. 
uh oh k is a real number you don't want that for sure so second branch is not going to give us any solutions unfortunately make sense okay so there's only one solution then k is equal to one half but we didn't evaluate the a b values right what is what does that mean it just gives us the z remember we were trying to solve for z and z was k times 1 minus root 3i and if k is equal to 1 over root 2 then z is going to be 1 over root 2 times 1 minus root 3i and this turns into 1 over root 2 minus root 3 over root 2i if those numbers at the bottom you know bother you which is something that bothers me you can go ahead and rationalize the denominators and just write it in a simpler form. And it's going to be the number. Now, let me tell you something. Why didn't the other solution work? Because when you multiply z by absolute value of z, obviously z, the absolute value of z is not 0. So absolute value of z is positive. And the result is 1 minus root 3i. So when you multiply something by a positive quantity, you're getting a positive real part, so the real part of z also has to be positive. That's why this is the only solution that works. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.